Good afternoon. Uh, it was the summer of 1987, and Ronald Reagan was president. Um, a group of five area musicians who had played uh, in larger ensembles, musical ensembles for many years, decided to get together just to read through some woodwind quintet music for fun. Several rehearsals later, they figured, hey, we're not too bad. And the Appalachian Wind Quintet was officially formed. Um, I'm not going to say too much more about the history of the quintet. It's uh, in the insert in your program, and you'll probably hear a little bit more about it later in the uh, concert. But uh, one thing that a group that's forming needs to do is to find a good place to rehearse. And we had a few problems in the fact that three of us were in and around Hagerstown, but one lived in Pennsylvania and one lived in Virginia, so we needed to find a nice central location. St. Mark's Lutheran Church is conveniently located, minutes off of Interstate 81, perfect place to hold a rehearsal. So at that time, we approached the past, at that time, Pastor uh, Coates, to see if we could receive permission to rehearse here. Uh, permission was graciously granted, and since that time, we've rehearsed in just about every room in this building, trying to avoid conflict with meetings and other rehearsals and then the various events that go on from day to day. So we wanted to make sure that we performed a concert uh, in thanks for the ongoing support that the church has given us over the last 25 years. Uh, and to do that, we thought, what better way than to invite three uh, very wonderful artists to join us. These artists have uh, uh, performed with us on and off for the past 25 years, and they are well known not only locally, but nationally and beneath on, and we certainly are very glad to have them. So we thank Jan and Wayne and Noel for performing with us today. You'll get to hear them in, in a few minutes. And uh, lastly, we wanted to thank you all for being here and thank the church once again for uh, supporting us graciously these past 25 years, and we hope that you enjoy the concert. here because it takes too long to walk around front so I feel a little far removed from you 
But I think the real reason is if I go too long, Ed Sheep's just going to drag me off to the side. So uh, welcome again. Uh, uh, as this program developed, we started calling it uh, Woodman Quintet and Friends, the Appalachian Quintet and Friends. And so uh, when I was doing notes for this, I said, okay, let's just see how far I can push that whole idea before we start all groaning every time I say the word friends. So if, if you feel like groaning, go ahead and do that, and then I'll know I've reached the limit. Um, certainly, uh, the, the first thing that I need to do is to thank Rick for all the work in, in terms of organizing this. This has been a monumental effort. Uh, not only, it, you know, all the regular things we go with organizing a program, but also with scheduling not only our, uh, uh, working around our individual schedules, the five of us, but with three extra people. And so uh, it's, been, it's been a lot of work, and so Rick has worked very hard for this, and we certainly appreciate that. Um, secondly, the concept of friends, uh, we're going to apply to our first two pieces as well. Um, the, the, the piece we just played for you, the Barth Pasacayu, as well as the Abair, our second piece on the program, were actually on the very first program that we played 25 years ago. And, and over the years have become very much our go-to pieces uh, in terms of programming, particularly the one you heard first because we, we really like to use that as a concert opener. Uh, we've tried other pieces in the past. Not that we didn't like them, we didn't like them as much. So we always come back to this. And, and uh, the same is true for the Iber. You'll notice the dates of the two composers, uh, they barely overlapped. I think it's like an eight year overlap in, in terms of when, one, when they were alive at the same time. But their musical styles are very similar. And these are both taken from uh, French 19th century tradition with their, their emphasis on instrumental color. And the Woodman Quintet is a perfect vehicle for this with, with all five completely different instruments. And so the combinations of those sounds were the hallmark of the French style. And so certainly uh, we want to uh, highlight those pieces in our programming and you're gonna hear three of them today as a matter of fact. So um, the uh, Hébert was a very late piece for French Romanticism. This dates from the year 1930. But again, it's very evocative of, of the, the whole style. Bubbly sounds, very rhythmically um, exciting. And uh, as the title would suggest, they are three short pieces.
The next song's by Gustav Mahler, were written between the years 1888 and 1899. A relative young man at the time, these were settings of songs or of poetry from a, an anthology in the early 19th century of German folk poetry, dealing with various subjects, typically nature and love, what you would expect, but, but Mahler was very much taken with these. And so uh, these are three songs taken from a cycle of 12, but he also used them much later in some of his symphonic work as well. So he kept revisiting these, uh, this anthology of poems. He was very much taken with them. Um, the arrangement that we have, obviously Mahler wrote it for, for a uh, soprano soloist with an orchestra accompaniment, but uh, uh, we found an arrangement by uh, Trevor Kramer that arranged it for Woodwind Quintet. And we found this fairly early in our history and played it for many years as an instrumental. So now we come to the friend part of this story. Uh, Jan Allen, we've known for years as a, a, a soloist in the various choral groups and her church organizations uh, from our association at Hood College, various operatic uh, performances and, and venues in the area. Um, some years ago, she asked us to play for her 50th birthday party. So we were lucky enough to play at her home, and I think it was there that the idea came, we should do some things together. So we knew we had this song cycle, or these three songs, and uh, we tried it, and well, we ran it by her first. Okay, it suits my voice, let me check with the original, make sure that it works. Indeed it does, it was close enough that we made it, with just a few minor revisions, made it work, not as an instrumental now, but in the original guy, so that you get to hear the poetry as well. So. Uh, we're very glad to invite our first guest up to join us today. This is uh, Jan Allen. She will join us for the three songs from Disc Knob and Wunderhorn.
next piece on our program hardly needs introduction at all. I think certainly for most of us, this is a piece that we grew up with. It was written in 1936, actually, and uh, originally scored for orchestra. Prokofiev called it a symphonic fairy tale. And the idea was to present this story in a musical setting so that it uh, certainly introduced the uh, children to the orchestra, but also to the individual instruments. So not only did each character within the story have its own melody, but it was also represented by a particular instrument. Now, lucky for us that most of the characters were represented by woodwinds, so it, it was just very logical for someone to make an arrangement for woodwind quintet. And that person was, once again, Trevor Kramer, our friend. And ah, I didn't mean to use that word there. OK, sorry about that. Uh, but anyway, uh, Trevor Kramer made this arrangement of Peter and the Wolf. And we incorporated it into our repertoire, oh, I don't know, quite a while ago, probably 20 years ago. Mainly, mainly to do it for, for kids programming, but we found that it works equally well on our regular programming as well, and people really respond to it. So uh, the other benefit of this piece was that wherever we go in terms of performing locations, we find a notable person in that particular area to do the narration. So it's a, it's a great way when you go to schools, you, you bring in a favorite teacher or a principal to do it. Uh, we've also done this with professional storytellers. But today, we're doing it with Pastor Steele. And so you'll be delighted to know that uh, all those years of giving sermons have paid off in his ability to narrate Peter and the Wolf as well. So we'd like to invite Pastor Steele to come up, and we will do Peter and the Wolf for you. hope the other guests here will understand. I promised the congregation this morning this would be the highlight. <coughs> and bring tears to everyone's eyes. So it, it may bring tears to your eyes out of uh, pain, but uh, here we go. It's a, a pleasure to do this, and I'm very honored to have been asked. So I'm looking forward to it very much. As I was growing up, uh, this was one of my favorite pieces uh, as a child. So now, I will do my best. This is the story of Peter and the wolf. Each character in this tale is represented by a different instrument of the quintet. The bird by the flute. The cat by the clarinet. Grandfather by the bassoon. The wolf by the horn, assisted by the clarinet and the bassoon. Peter opened the gate and went out on a big green meadow.
On a branch of a big tree sat a little bird, Peter's friend. All is quiet, chirped the bird gaily. Soon, a duck came waddling around. She was glad that Peter had not closed the gate and decided to take a nice swim in the deep pond in the meadow. Seeing the duck, the little bird flew down upon the grass, settled next to the duck, and shrugged her shoulders. What kind of bird of you if you can't fly? said she. To this the duck replied, What kind of bird of you if you can't swim? and dived into the pond. Suddenly, something caught Peter's eye. He noticed a cat crawling through the grass. cat thought. The bird is busy arguing. I'll just grab her stealthily and crept toward her. Toward the bird on her velvet paws. Grandpa came out. He was angry because Peter had gone to the meadow. It is a dangerous place. If a wolf would come out of the forest, then what would you do? Peter paid no attention to grandfather's words. Boys, as he, are not afraid of wolves. Father took Peter by the hand, led him home, and laughed. 
lock the gate. No sooner had Peter gone than a big gray wolf came out of the forest. Twinkling, the cat climbed up the tree. The duck quacked, and in her excitement, jumped out of the pond. But no matter how hard the duck tried to run, she couldn't escape the wolf. He was getting nearer, nearer, nearer. Catching up with her. And then he got her. And with one gulp, swallowed her. And now this is how things stood. The cat was sitting on one branch, the bird on another, not too close to the cat. And the wolf walked around the tree looking the, at them with greedy eyes. In the meantime, Peter, without the slightest fear, stood behind the closed gate, watching all that was going on. He ran home, took a strong rope, and climbed the high stone wall. One of the branches of the tree around which the wolf was walking stretched over the wall. Grabbing hold of the branch, Peter climbed onto the tree while the bird flew around the wolf, distracting him. Peter took a lasso and carefully letting it down. Caught the wolf by the tail and pulled with all his might. Feeling himself caught, the wolf began to jump wildly, trying to get Holt loose. But Peter tied the other end of the rope to a tree, and the wolf's jumping only made the rope around his tail tighter. Just then, the hunters came out of the woods, following the wolf's trail. Sitting 
in the tree said, Don't shoot! Bertie and I have already caught the wolf. Now help us take him to the zoo. And so they started off to the zoo. Imagine the triumphal procession with Peter proudly marching in the lead. After him came the hunters leading the wolf that Peter had caught. But winding up the procession was Grandfather and the cat. Grandfather shook his head and grumbled. And if Peter had caught the wolf, what then? Above them flew the little bird, chirping merrily. My, what a fine pair we are, Peter and I. Look what we have caught. If you listen very carefully, you will hear the duck quacking inside the wolf because the wolf in his haste had swallowed her alive. He said I had to wait on it. I didn't wait. Sorry. Throughout most of our 25 years, we've been very lucky to have the support of the Washington County Arts Council. And they, they helped us sponsor not only a series of concerts in Washington County, but also periodically commissioning projects where we would, we would approach composers in the area to write new pieces for the quintet and for us in particular. And uh, this has been a very successful program for us. And so we wanted to make sure that we included one of those new pieces on our program today. Uh, Wayne Waldis, a colleague of ours from Hood College, uh, where he's the organist there and, and a professor, and we asked him to write a piece for us that used the organ. And one of our first performances was in this very location. So I don't know if any of you were at, at that particular performance, but that was, I don't know, what was that, 95? Do you, I, don't, I should have looked that up, I didn't do it. Yeah, right, okay. Say no more, that's all it was. But, um, so we wanted to revisit it. The name, as you can see, is uh, Spring from Appalachian Seasons. And of course, that's a little bit longer than just Appalachian Spring, but of course that name was already taken, so we really couldn't use that again. But still, it's evocative of the time that we're in, so we thought this was particularly appropriate to perform today. So we'd like to uh, have you acknowledge that Wayne is gonna join us at the organ, and we'll play his composition, uh, Spring from Appalachian Seasons.
we wanted to do one more piece with just us from our repertoire. And um, what we chose was a piece that had been lurking in our files from the very beginning that we failed to notice. There's a, there's a collection of woodwind quintets that every quintet owns just because it's, it's a good thing to have. You can draw a lot of, of music from it. But embedded within that was a piece by Adolf de Londra that, that for years we never, never read. And then when we finally did read it, it's like, wow, we need to be using this. So this, this was maybe five or six years ago. We, we played this a couple times. And then when we were um, choosing the repertoire for our 25th season, we, we chose to add this again. So we wanted to share with you one movement from this anyway. This is the finale from this. Uh, uh, Delandre was, was an organist, as a matter of fact. And uh, he wrote this as... Uh, I don't know if it was a commission necessarily, but it was for a, a society that, whose purpose was to promote chamber music for wind instruments. And a lot of composers in 19th century uh, Paris were, were doing this, and this was the uh contribution to this project. Uh, this dates from the year 1900, finale from the Quintet by Delandre.
Our next association is a long one with, with Hood College. And uh, until recently, Noel Lester was the chair of the department. He's recently stepped down, but he continues in his capacity as concert organizer and director. And it is that one that we are, are very much indebted to him because he has allowed us to play there uh, almost annually for the last 15 years or so, I believe. And uh, we're certainly great, very grateful for that there's nothing to keep a group going like having a new concert in the same location every year, okay? So you, you have to keep building your repertoire uh, just to keep doing that. But one of the, uh, one of the things that we uh, are also very much uh, 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 grateful to Dr. Lesser is the fact that he's agreed to join us in learning uh, some of the literature for woodwind quintet plus piano, the woodwind sextet. We've actually prepared most of the major works for this uh, particular combination of instruments. And the one we're going to play today is a movement from uh, a lesser known one, uh, certainly this composer uh, Ludwig Twila, or Twila, is not very much known. In fact, this piece is one of the few that, that he's even uh, known for at all now. Uh, and we actually recorded this piece uh, through the generosity of, of Harry Campbell and her husband. and, and uh, and that recording was, was featured on National Public Radio on uh, Fred Flaxman's uh, Compact Discovery. So uh, that's a claim to fame that we're very proud of. But uh, somewhat due to the obscurity of the composer and somewhat due to the fact of our performance, I, I'd like to think anyway. So we're playing the Gavotte movement of this sextet. Uh, very short, but uh, certainly uh, a lot of fun. Uh, late romantic style. And uh, so please help us welcome Dr. Noel Lester.
get to talk through his exit music. I find, uh, certainly, we want to thank you again for being here today, and hope you enjoy the program. We're gonna we're gonna end our program with an evocation of summer, and we're gonna bring back Jan Allen to see one of our all-time favorites to do with her, "Summertime" from uh, Porgy and Bess from 1935.